How to store amulets and talismans. I have a lot of magical artifacts. The masters who made them, and other practitioners, talk about the need to physically separate amulets and talismans so that they don't come into contact with each other. But I keep all of them together. Tell us, do they have any effect on one another? Is it enough just to put them in a plastic bag, for example? It depends on how they were made. If each amulet is connected to its own channel and that channel is protected, then you won't have any troubles. They are isolated from each other, as if they were in different rooms, in different spaces. One is in the past, one is in the present, one is in the future. And they are in different places even though they are stored together in physical space. If they aren't made on separate channels, if they are made on the same channel and contain mutually exclusive formulas, they can affect each other. It all depends on how exactly they were made. After all, it is not only the formula we put into an artifact that is important, but also the channel through which we create it. For example, today we are working with the channel and formulas of the god Thor. Thor will support these formulas. And Odin will support the formulas that I gave you in the previous class. Even if these two talismans with Thor's formula and Odin's formula are placed side by side, they won't come into conflict with each other. But if you put a Christian cross next to them, it is likely that they will perceive each other as something foreign. It's like having a freshly baked cake on the table next to something completely foreign, like a pair of old shoes. They don't look good together. Just like the different cults. For example, on one of your amulets you draw the sigil of Samuel or Lilith, a demoness from a completely different cult. It's clear that Lilith herself can tell you, who are you going to keep me with? Here you have to look at the overall picture. First, the cults must be complementary. If you use two runic talismans, each made on its own channel, you won't have any problems. But if they are from different cults, you will most likely have trouble. Conflicts will occur at the level of cults. That's why you need to know the rules of artifact creation very well. The basis of its study is first and foremost the study of mythology and religions in order to understand what you should never combine. And how might that manifest itself in the surrounding space? First they look at whose print is on it, who the master is. If the master has released himself from any responsibility in advance, they look to see who the owner is, whose biological traces are on the artifact, and begin to confront the owner. The owner starts getting hit from all sides. This is very evident in the behavior of the cats. If they see conflicting artifacts in the same box, they behave extremely inadequately. They see that something is brewing and avoid the area where something is wrong. I better get out of here. There's something going on that even I can't figure out. Household spirits also react to this. Light bulbs in the house start to explode, pipes start to leak. If these artifacts are kept in the house, it all starts with little household problems that indicate that something is wrong in the field. And you, personally, start to feel a lot of frustration, a lot of dissatisfaction with yourself. And until you separate those artifacts into different spaces, that dissatisfaction won't let you eat, sleep, and drink, it won't let you do anything. It all manifests itself in different ways. It all depends on how involved you are. For example, if you are a rune master and work primarily with the runes, your runic artifacts will be the winners. Foreign symbols will have no effect on you. Well, maybe you'll be irritated by this symbol but that's all. Or, 
If you have good contact with your own gods, they will simply tell you explicitly what you have foolishly done. Perhaps even in ordinary, simple words. If you are just a master who does not care how and on what channels to connect artifacts, then most likely with such a mistake you will start experiencing social and domestic problems of small and large scale as a sign that the quiet life was over for you. Your car would break down, your wallet would be stolen. You wouldn't make the money you planned to make, and you'd lose it even more because you made a mistake. Actually, artifact creation is a great science, and you have to know it well in theory. It's not just knowing how to apply, how to carve, how to bless, like Odin said, do you know how to carve, do you know how to interpret, do you know how to color, but it's also knowing why one cult does it one way and another cult does it another way, and why it is best not to wear a cross and a Lilith charm pendant together. Therefore you need to know the history of the conflict between Yahweh and Lilith. For example, do not wear a Christian cross and a Muslim crescent moon together. Yes, it's best not to wear them together. Otherwise, you can meet a vivid manifestation of this Christian-Muslim conflict right on the street. And you will have to experience it on your own skin. It's all bound to manifest itself, since our reality is a mirror of all the processes that take place. And when incompatible channels meet inside our own head, we attract chaotic and conflict events into our lives. So think twice, especially if you are practicing magic and not just using artifacts. There's always a potential for conflict when you're just using different artifacts and wearing them around your neck or whatever. Anyway, you know, there's a law among practitioners. A person who has died of poison sues a person who prepared the poison for him. If a person dies from using an improper artifact, then the master would be held responsible. That makes sense. Of course that makes sense. That is the law. Don't forget it. Think ten times, check yourself to see if you did everything right, if you didn't make a mistake anywhere, and everything will be all right.